Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 15.2 has been out for almost a week at this point. I was using it primarily on my iPhone 13 Pro Max and then a couple days ago iOS 15.3 Beta 1 came out. So I've been using both full time on my main device so I wanted to talk about the overall experience that I've been having as well as what you had to say based off the YouTube community poll. I've had a, a poll running for a couple days and at the time of this video you can see there's 25,000 votes which is just incredible. So thanks to everyone that voted and 555 comments at the time of this video. If I refresh, still 555, but I took all of that information from what you had to say in the comments, compiled it so we can talk about battery, storage, any additional issues, and more. Now, the first thing though I want to talk about is a few new features that I didn't mention in the initial what's new video for iOS 15.2. There's a couple things or changes that I didn't mention. And the first one has to do with child protection. There's a new toggle to turn this on or off. As I know a lot of people were concerned that Apple was turning this on and it's for children 13 years of age or younger. So what it does is if a photo comes into messages or they're searching on Safari and there's a photo that could be something a child shouldn't see. It will blur it out. Once they tap on the photo, it will ask them if, are they sure they want to see it? And do you want to contact a parent or someone that you trust? There's actually a toggle for this. If you don't want this turned on, it's under settings. So if we go under settings and you go down to screen time, you tap on screen time and then you have to go to a child that's 13 years of age or younger, or you won't see it. So we'll go into that. Once you go into here, you'll see that we have communication safety, tap on communication safety, and we have a toggle for it. It's actually off by default. So if this is something that's concerning to you, you can keep it off. If you want to turn it on, it's done all on device. It's not sent to Apple or anything like that. And it only seems to be available in the United States from what a lot of people are telling me. It may be available in other countries, but the people that seem to have this box actually, or this, this little toggle here seem to actually say that they're in the United States. If they're outside of that, they're not seeing it. So I'm curious if you have this and if it's just a United States feature as Apple hasn't really specified. Now, another thing that went along with child protection has to do with CSAM. Apple has removed all references to CSAM from their website and it's gone now. So that was delayed indefinitely. Maybe they're considering it later, but as of this moment, it's not even something they're mentioning. So maybe they've done away with it altogether until they can figure out a different way, or maybe it just won't come back. So we'll have to wait and see with that. Also, there's another thing they've updated that's called security lockout reset. So say somebody puts in your passcode, you hand your phone to a child, they put in the passcode and lock it out for say a minute or so. So let's try that on this iPhone 11. So if we go on the iPhone 11, we'll lock it, unlock it and we'll slide up and we'll force it to lock out. So we'll just put in the wrong password a couple times. We'll do that a few different times. We'll make sure it locks out here. Now, once you've had three lockout attempts from your phone, it will say erase iPhone, but it has to be after 15 minutes, as you see here. So you can now erase it right from the phone as long as it has an internet connection instead of having to connect it to a computer. So that's something they've updated in 15.2. But as far as any additional features, that's everything that was in 15.2 that I didn't mention in the initial what's new video, but let's talk about issues that you're experiencing and I'm experiencing with 15.2. The first thing is the storage bug. The storage bug that's present on a lot of these iPhones, meaning going to settings, going to general, going to iPhone storage, waiting for it to load. Some people are saying it's not loading on 15.2. 15.3 seems to improved this quite a bit, as you can see here. So 15.2 still has the issue, not just that, but sometimes it doesn't load entirely or shows the wrong storage overall. So it would show you're using a massive amount of storage, even though you don't really have a whole lot on the phone. Or it could say that you have a different storage amount than your phone actually is. It could say that you have 300 gigabytes available instead of 256. So that's something that is a bug in 15.2 that so far with 15.3 beta one seems to be resolved. Now, as far as battery life, quite a few of you were saying that it was much better with 15.2 while we were running the betas and the release candidate. And I'm seeing the same in the comments from you this time around. However, there are some that are having worse battery life, but if you just installed it, you need to give it a couple days as it processes a lot in the background. But I wanted to share with you my battery life and someone else that sent me in their battery life. Life. You'll see my battery health is at 100% and we'll go down to the last 10 days and you can see yesterday 
I had no cell coverage. So I had pretty poor battery life. When you have no cell coverage, it ramps up the power and drains a lot. I had two hours and 29 minutes of screen on time, six hours and 27 minutes of screen off time and used over 50%. However, the day before with good cell coverage, I had almost five hours of screen on time and seven hours and 29 minutes of screen off time and used 50%. So this is easily getting me through a day on 15.2 and 15.3. In both cases, I actually get through a day and go to bed with about 50% or more left. You can see right now at the time of recording this video, it's actually midnight and this has been off the charger most of the day. So I'm down to 50%. It's been off since this morning. And again, I'm having similar battery life with 15.2 and 15.3 but someone else sent me in their screenshots from their 11 pro max and they had three hours and five minutes of screen on time and two minutes of screen off time and only used a little over 25% of their battery life in this case. Again, they sent me another day and in this case they used a little bit more three hours and 36 minutes and they used about 45% of their battery life. So in most cases they're seeming to get pretty good battery life depending on what they're doing of course that will vary greatly but in general most people are saying it's quite good after they give it a couple days to install and finish doing that so we'll take a look at the comments a little bit later as far as that goes now as far as additional issues i had some odd issues and i took a photo of this as well and i had an overlapping email so this was on my ipad i had an overlapping email for some reason i'm not sure who this person is, just some spam email, but I had some overlapping email, didn't know what it said, I couldn't fix it, I had to close the app, reopen it, and sometimes it was still there. Not a whole lot I could do about that, but for some reason it was showing like that on my iPad. Also, I've still had some issues with apps not working, as have a lot of you. A lot of people were saying they were having issues with third-party apps, and many of them said with WhatsApp or Facebook-owned apps or Meta at this point. So Facebook, and then also YouTube as far as touch bugs. So WhatsApp was having issues, Facebook in general, and then also I had issues with Google Smart Lock, I've talked about before, where it just crashes when it goes to activate Bluetooth. And so if you use that for two-factor authentication, it's down here. If you use this app, Smart Lock here, which you use for two-factor authentication with Google, it just crashes when it goes to activate Bluetooth and you hit yes to allow you to log in. So that's broken with this update. However, I think Apple changed something so that the app developers do need to update something to fix those issues. So hopefully we see that very, very soon. Now, as far as lagging, crashing, and freezing up, I did have some issues with that on 15.2, but not so much on 15.3. So it looks like they continue to fix these issues and some of you mentioned the same thing. So there's still some odd lags and things here and there. Also, some people are saying that the phone is getting unusually warm. This is typically around using music. So there's that music bug that's still there. And Apple has even said that if you're streaming music, you go into music, you play a song and it's not downloaded to the phone. So you're streaming through Apple music. It will heat the phone up using more CPU and then also drain the battery quickly. So just be aware that if you have that, you may want to try and download the song so that it fixes that issue. So if it is getting hot while playing music, that may be why. That's a bug that's still there. However, in 15.3, we don't know if they've fixed it yet. Also, some people were saying that Apple Music was lagging. So whether that pl be playing music, sometimes it would just stutter and stop playing altogether. Now, there's some cellular issues that quite a few people are having, myself included with 15.2 and 15.3. 15.2 seemed to be better than 15.3 so far, and 15.3 updated the modem, which typically fixes cellular connectivity. However, the modem update with 15.3 is older than 15.2, so it seems to be an issue here and there for some, and it's typically for me with T-Mobile switching between 5G and other versions, 5G, 4G, LTE, 5G, then Wi-Fi, and things like that. Oftentimes I'll have to turn on airplane mode, turn it back off, and that will fix the issue. I've heard of this from many people within the comments as well. So typically, I don't know if it's just T-Mobile or other carriers, but it seems to be an issue with switching at, at this point. I thought they fixed it with 15.2, but some people are still seeing that issue. Also, Bluetooth has been working well for me, but some people have issues with AirPod connectivity, whether that be it breaking up or dropping altogether. Bluetooth for me has been pretty solid on both of these updates, but for some people it's just not. And then additionally, Apple CarPlay seems to be a huge issue for people still. 
Many people mentioned CarPlay connectivity issues, and someone even mentioned that when using Siri, it would just crash altogether. So there's definitely some odd things going on there. When it comes to iPadOS 15.2, it seems to be much better. And what I mean by that is battery life seems to be resolved with this update. Now 15.3 is on here now, but with 15.2, it seemed to fix that issue. And if we go into settings, and if you've been following along for the past few weeks with 15.2 or just the iPad in general, I had a lot of issues where it would drain very rapidly as far as battery life. You'll see here I had three hours and 11 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 42 minutes of screen off time. I'm not sure why it still has screen off time, but you'll see here I only used about 30 to 40% of the battery. That means I would get closer to the 10 hours of screen on time using that. Today though, I've used it less and I'm down to 37%. I've even charged it. So if you're on the iPad, I would probably stay on 15.2 unless you have an extra iPad as it does seem to have fixed some of those battery issues I was having. Also, if you notice here, this is an iPhone XS Max, and a lot of people were asking me to include different devices. Now, this one needed to be updated. This is actually my daughter's phone right now. It's not fully updated, and so I thought I'd do that here, but I wanted to share with you that I'm going to be including different devices now. So I have the iPhone 11, which a lot of people have, but here's the XS Max. We'll include the 10 and others a little bit later as I do more of these follow-up videos like I have for years. Now, as I said before, with the iPad, I would stay on iOS 15.2, and if you're wondering if you should update to that version, if you haven't already, I would definitely recommend it because it seems to fix those issues with battery, and there's a lot of different changes and security updates. So there's definitely better stability with 15.2. There's still additional bugs. All software has bugs, but it seems more stable and definitely seems to have better battery life on the iPad for most people and most people on the iPhone. Not everyone, but a lot of people. However, if you're wondering when iOS 15.3 might come out, well, if we take a look at what came out last year, last year, Apple actually released iOS 14.4 beta one, similar to what they did with this past Friday. And then they waited until about mid January until we saw beta two. So it may be a few weeks until we see another update at this point. So I would stay on a stable version unless you, you don't mind having some issues from time to time, but there are some improvements with 15.3 as far as scrolling and things like that. ProMotion seems to be much better on the new pro model phones, but in general, I would probably stay on 15.2, wait for beta two, see how it goes from there. And we'll see more features with that update as well. Now, as far as what you had to say with the YouTube community poll, let's go ahead and take a look at a few of those comments. So again, let me refresh. And at this time, now there's still 555 comments. I don't expect too many more as it's pretty late at night. So let's take a look at some of them. Amateur Crastinator said, ran into a couple of bugs. The most frustrating was when I tried adding a widget onto a stack and my whole home screen wicked out. A couple of widgets disappeared, a few apps wouldn't show up anywhere until I rebooted, and all apps and folders just got removed or dumped out. Jerry M says, 13 Pro here, iOS 15.2 has been the best of the iOS 15 updates thus far. No issues with battery life, the Siri beep is still missing. Matt T says, iPhone 10 on iOS 15.2 seems to be running stable. I have haven't noticed any lag. Battery life is good. My battery life is still at 100% after replacing it last year. I'm thinking means battery health and playing music seems to be better as well. No issues there. Solid update. Marissa Stanley says I'm using iOS 15.2 on my iPhone 12 Pro and I've noticed when I'm charging my phone it has been getting very warm and then my screen will freeze for a couple seconds when I open anything. Thomas D says battery life has been great with iOS 15.2 on my 13 pro and 13 pro max. No complaints here. Everything is working great. Diego Garcia 85349 says rocking the 10 S with iOS 15.2 and feels just like it did when I first bought it fast, smooth and lag free. Fantastic update. Sheldon Carlson says iOS 15.2 on an iPhone SE first gen having random app crashes and poor battery life on a new battery. I used to get a full day on one overnight charge with 30% left. Now I only get eight to 10 hours before I have to plug it in. Battery health has gone down from 100 to 98% in about a week. Steve Carrero said, performance seems to be better so far on iOS 15.2. Battery life seems to be the same as before the update iPhone 10. 
Susan Graham said iOS 15.2 on iPhone 13 Pro Max only issue is Apple Music with request timeout, but other than that, no other issues are found. Shiro Yuki says updated both phones to 15.2, works flawlessly on the iPhone 13 Pro, much improvements on the iPhone XS, such as reduced lags during multitasking window and better battery life. Mohammed Nadine says I'm using a 12 Pro, battery life is much better than older versions. I liked it. And Scotty McGillicuddy says 13 Pro Max, 15.2, still have Apple Music issues where it goes to the next song, sits there for a minute, and then decides it won't play it, and then skips to the next one. Been having that issue for a while, even before I upgraded from a 10s Max to a 13 Pro Max two weeks ago. So that's it for iOS 15.2 and 15.3 Beta 1. Now 15.2 will be out for a little while before we see 15.3, probably in January or February, since we're sort of on the holiday break at this point with Christmas and New Year's and more. So as far as that goes, I wouldn't expect an update for a while, but 15.2 seems to be a very solid update and definitely what we would expect, hopefully from a first version of iOS 15. It fixes a lot of bugs, it seems much more stable, and most people are experiencing better battery life like I showed you before. So other than that, I'm looking forward to what Apple has, but I wouldn't expect any major changes until iOS 16, which we'll see in June of 2022, typically at WWDC or the Worldwide Developer Conference. So at this point, I'm looking forward to what Apple's coming up with next. Maybe we'll see some major changes, or maybe they'll just focus on stability. What would you like to see them do in, in the future with iOS 16 and maybe Mac OS and, and iPad OS and more? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.